everybody, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Welcome back to our first scheduled video. Uh, Monday through Friday, we plan to have videos out just like this one, uh, you know, at 11 a.m. Central Time. Now, there's a bit of a caveat on potentially tomorrow's timing due to a certain event happening in the gaming industry that we may or may not be covering live. Obviously, if we're covering that live, that will cause a delay in this video, but We'll have to wait and see. Uh, also, there's another event we might be doing shortly after this video is published, uh, but we'll, again, talk about that a bit later in this video because we have eight big stories to talk to you about today. Uh, and here is a little preview of them. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> you're seeing something over on that list that uh, that's, a, that, that's this way that actually interests you. Uh, that being said, uh, we do have a new channel for our Nintendo Prime podcast that I am encouraging you guys to go subscribe to. In fact, if you do subscribe and hit the bell icon on that new YouTube channel for our podcast, you will get a bonus entry in our Prime Giving Giveaway for the Nintendo Switch OLED bundle. So uh, we have some cool bundle items happening with this and I am happy to uh, tease another item that's going to go along with the Switch OLED bundle and that is a brand new Satisfy Grip intended for Switch OLED. So we're gonna get the new uh, Switch OLED specific version of the Satisfy Grip sent out along with the Switch OLED. I mentioned this is gonna be a bundle, so there's gonna be more items in there as well. Obviously the winner of this bundle gets to choose a charity of their choice uh, for $100. Now we do have a live stream you need to attend in order uh, you know, for us to announce that winner. But if you are subscribed to our channel, that's one entry. And if you're subscribed to our second channel for the Nintendo Prime Podcast, that is a bonus entry. So uh, get those entries in while you can. Links in the description to subscribe to those channels uh, and in the pinned comment. And I appreciate all of you guys' support both on this channel and our brand new Nintendo Prime Podcast channel. That being said, let's get into today's Nintendo news. Uh, so first up, we have a small little note from the creator of Deku Deals. Deku Deals is a website we talked about during a video last week that puts up a lot of video game deals, not just for Nintendo, but other platforms as well. Uh, and Nintendo Life interviewed the creator of this website uh, that's been around for a little while. And there was one particular part of this that I thought was worth mentioning, because in general, the guy who runs the website is just someone like you or me running a website. Um, I've ran websites before, uh, not necessarily always noteworthy to interview, but there's something brought up that I don't think gets enough attention. Uh, so here was what uh, the creator of Deku Deals was asked. How do you think Nintendo could better improve its eShop interface and usability? And he says, from a usability perspective, the eShop is just way too slow. The pages take much longer to load than they should, and even the animations run poorly. It also has a little ridiculous that putting the console to sleep while the eShop is open will usually cause it to close with an error message next time you turn the console on. I've actually seen this happen myself. I kind of sort of dismiss it um, as a minor annoyance but it does occur um, and I, I think that this is just worth bringing up because obviously most of the time when we talk about the Nintendo Switch eShop we're talking about how can it improve in terms of its um, content discoverability and presentation uh, we don't often talk about that it's actually getting a bit long in the tooth you know getting close to five years in in terms of just how well it runs and the speed of it it seemed a lot more snappy in 2017 but that might have just been my memory doing me dirty because well guess what um it could have been just as slow back then and it's just more noticeable today as everyone else is much snappier so this is a situation where uh, there isn't really much I think Nintendo's going to do about it this generation. Uh, Nintendo has a tendency to like launch these things that seem to work and then don't really maintain them. So I don't know. Uh, this is one of those, I just want Nintendo to do better, but there's no real sign on when or if Nintendo is going to be doing better. So pff, we're just kind of left to wonder, right? Uh, next up, we've been following the ongoing Grand Theft Auto trilogy uh, sort of debacle since it launched it's had a number of issues on on uh, multiple platforms including nintendo switch of course uh and was removed from pc uh for sale and they finally did a public response to all the criticism and since we've been covering all the criticism and all the issues i think it's only fair that we allow rockstar to speak for themselves they are the ones that control and own the ip 
and they put out on Twitter, Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, is again available through Rockstar Games Launcher for play and purchase. So this was the PC version that they removed due to issues. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and are working to improve and update overall performance as we move forward. Now, they could be talking specifically just about the PC version since the first half of that uh, tweet does talk about bringing the PC version back, but it's on their general Rockstar support um, Twitter. And yeah, it's you know the whole game you know, across the board needs performance improvements, needs a lot of updates. And uh, maybe those updates will come. Maybe they won't. Rockstar did outsource the GTA trilogy as someone corrected me uh, in a prior video. So we'll have to just kind of sort of wait and see on this approach. But uh, all we can do is really hope for the best. The Grand Theft Auto is one of the biggest IPs in the world and deserves better. But there's a lot of IPs that deserve better but get treatment like this. So yeah let's just hope for the best and like in six months the game is in a much better state now i did note by the way that even in the current state the game is in there's millions of you that are going to still have a blast with these games because they're still really good games so take that for what you will all right next up we have a bit of news on shin megami tensei 5 and this news may be upsetting to some uh if it comes true but i'm also not going to overreact because i don't think it's that big of a deal but it's a big enough deal to talk about because people worry about this. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei 5 might actually only be a temporary Nintendo Switch exclusive. It just came out last week. It is a Switch exclusive. Nintendo's helped market the game. But uh, yeah, it might only be a temporary Switch exclusive because data miners have discovered in a file that talks about um, the versions and the target platforms uh, that the game was targeting Switch, PlayStation 4, and PC. Now, it's possible that these are actually just leftover little code bits and fragments from early development uh, before Nintendo swooped in and helped make it a Switch exclusive. It's also possible that this is sort of like Octopath Traveler that was Switch exclusive, but then later went to all platforms. So this is just something to keep in the back of our minds that Shin Megami Tensei 5 may still be Switch exclusive, but it also might just be a timed exclusive. This is something we're not gonna know and hasn't been publicly talked about at this time. It's unlike Monster Hunter Rise, where it was known before it came out on Switch that there would be a PC version a year later. So we knew that essentially there was going to be a delay, um, you know, but a, a one year exclusivity thing. Uh, in this case, that has not actually been announced, but it wouldn't be surprising. I think the one upsetting aspect about this for Switch owners, and this isn't, Again, more people getting to play this amazing game is always better, right? PlayStation 4 and PC, bring it to Xbox as well. Screw it. Everyone should get to enjoy the wonderfulness that is Shin Megami Tensei 5. But I will say this. If Shin Megami Tensei 5 goes multi-platform, where's our Persona game? I think it's only fair that if we're sitting there showing up big for Shin Megami Tensei 5, that you're willing to treat us like all the other consumers out there and actually give us Persona. So... I'm all for this going multi-platform, but if you're going to do that, Persona 5 and others better be coming to Switch. I'm just, I'm just saying, okay? We, we don't, don't leave us in the cold while you bring something we have that's really great to other people. By the way, still bring it to other people because I truly believe in um, more people getting to play great games is better. Like if it'd be advantageous for Nintendo, I wouldn't even care if they put Breath of the Wild on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC because more people that get to play, the merrier. In fact, if Nintendo would start supporting PC the way Xbox and PlayStation do, even though PlayStation gives the games there later, at least they still do it, I think that would be a beautiful partnership and actually help curb maybe some of the people that like to emulate uh, by offering people a PC versions of their older Nintendo Switch. I'm not saying like come out Nintendo and give us a PC version of, I don't know, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl tomorrow. But I am saying, hey, you know, Breath of the Wild, Splatoon 2, would it really be so bad if you had PC versions officially for that four years later? I don't know. Maybe you guys are going to crucify me in the comments for that one. So this next story is one of our non-Nintendo stories, but I like to make sure that we stay up to date as gamers on a lot of the major events happening in the video game industry. And today there's actually a massive Xbox event because um, Microsoft and the Xbox team are celebrating the 20 year anniversary of Xbox, which also happens to also be the 20 year anniversary of Halo, which launched on the OG Xbox back in the day with the Duke controller. Um, yes, I was there, folks. I, I, there's something nostalgic about uh, 20 years ago Xbox. Um, so just want to remind you guys that it is at 10 a.m. Pacific today or an hour after this video goes live. Um, I am still undecided on if I'm going to be live streaming this event or not. I am leaning towards 
live streaming it, uh, depending on how long it is, but we'll see. Uh, normally this involves at least a half hour pre-show, but again, we'll have to wait and see. I need to give this video room to breathe as well. Um, maybe in fact, we might launch this video if it's ready early, uh, just to make sure we're making time for that event. Uh, but we'll see. Um, it supposedly is going to have a shadow drop of Halo Infinite multiplayer. There's been a ton of rumors around the multiplayer shadow dropping today and being announced at the event. Uh, it's also possible that some have said, hey, it's actually still going to come in November, but there's been a little bit of internal delays. We'll probably see a look at the Halo Infinite campaign potentially today. Uh, and who knows what else? I the, the whole event's not just going to be Halo. I guarantee they're not going to celebrate the 20, 20 years of Xbox and only talk about Halo. There's got to be more. Uh, and Xbox could really use a nice little boost for 2022, even if a lot of what they talk about is not going to be today. I mean, can we see Perfect Dark? Can we see, um, you know, next games from Bethesda? There is a lot of stuff uh, that we could see moving forward. So we'll just have to keep our eyes peeled today. But yeah, there's a high chance I'm probably going to live stream react to it just because I try to do that for the bigger industry events. And 20 years of Xbox seems like a pretty big industry event, even if it's not Nintendo. All right, next up, uh, we covered this a little bit on live stream last night, but I wanted to talk about the fact that Doug Bowser um, is finally pu putting on his Reggie fils cap um, and responding to some controversies at Nintendo, including Joy-Con Drift and N64 emulation on Switch. Now, on the latter there, uh, when it comes to N the N64 emulation issue on Switch, he says, we're constantly looking for ways to make our online features and those games better and continuing to add value through more services and more games as we go forward. We take the feedback very seriously and we're continuing to look at ways to improve the overall performance. For us, it's about quality, great content and great value. And that last line has probably got a few Nintendo fans chuckling because quality, you could question, great content I think is a little bit unquestionable. Great value can also be questioned as well, just in general, especially when we're talking about anything with Nintendo Switch Online. So um, I'm not gonna poke too much fun at it. He's just putting on his best Reggie fils face and, and just doing what he's supposed to do. And that's spin negative stories and the positive ones. Reggie fils was a maestro at doing that and Doug Bowser's just following suit. I don't blame him. He's literally, one of his primary jobs is to be a good PR person for Nintendo of Japan. So, I mean, this is kind of the response. I do like that they are listening to feedback, uh, but whether anything comes of it, we'll find out in due time. Now, he does talk about the Joy-Con drift issue uh, and he kind of reaffirms something that Nintendo's already stated, but he's much more bold about that affirmation because last time Nintendo talked about Joy-Con drift, they said that they have addressed it, but also every controller is going to drift. So they're like, oh, they addressed it by not addressing it. By They addressed it by admitting that, yeah, controllers are just going to drift in general. It doesn't matter what we do, which, you know, some people felt like it was a cop out, but ignored the context of the whole response. So he just gets straight to the point. As we've gone through the first five and a half years of Nintendo Switch, which who wants to tell them? Do you want to tell them? Should I tell them? Hasn't been five and a half years, Doug Bowser. Hey, I'm just, you're, you're the president and CEO of Nintendo of America. I'm just saying, you might want to know how long your platform has been on the market. Now you personally might have had access to a Switch for five and a half years. But the five-year anniversary is March 3rd of 2022. I'm just saying, Doug Bowser, you just might want to remember how long it's been available publicly, not privately. I'm sure it's been five and a half years for you, not us. <laughs> Anyways, just a small little quip. I, it's funny when like a, a little goof is made like that because he's probably had a Switch for five and a half years. Um, Anyways, we've observed gameplay and we've observed as people have returned units, how they've worn. And we've been making continuous improvements overall to the Joy-Con, including the analog stick. This latest version, the Nintendo Switch OLED, has the same updated analog stick that's now available in the original Switch and Nintendo Switch Lite. So in other words, this is exactly what Nintendo told us before, but instead of like, you know, dancing around the topic by saying all controllers are going to drift eventually, which is a factually true statement, and it it just led to some trepidation. They're supposed to use higher quality parts that have, you know, addressed some, basically the core of the drift issue. Again, I can't test it. You pro probably can't test it. Nobody's really tested it. Time is just going to tell if the newer Joy-Cons, newer Switch lights, newer OG Switches start to have drift in a year because we're going to need to give it some time. Switch OLED's still a little too new to know 
if uh, it's going if it's suffering any major drift issues. Uh, next up, speaking of industry-wide events, you now we talked about the Xbox event. Now we got to talk about the Game Awards. So we will be live streaming reacting to the Game Awards on December 9th, uh, and tomorrow is a big day because tomorrow is when all the award nominees are announced. They're doing this through a live stream at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, which again is 11 a.m. Central time. And this is where I talked about if I end up doing a video tomorrow, maybe it gets delayed because we'll be live stream reacting to the TGAs. We'll have to wait and see on that. Just like today's video might have came out a bit earlier than my usual or my planned 11 a.m. slot just because, uh, yeah, we got... Uh, another industry event to cover so industry events obviously take a little bit of priority because they're live events and we want to cover them as they happen we don't want to have to make you guys wait for that news all right so um yeah i'm pretty excited about it pretty excited about the nominees probably going to be a big topic on the nintendo prime podcast this week again go subscribe to the podcast channel uh so yeah let's stay tuned for that all right our second to last story deals with breath of the wild 2 and it's a bit of a cop-out story but I still smile because Nintendo has been throwing out infographs and, and graphics advertising their games for next year like crazy. And on every single graphic is the sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. There's not even like a proper, um, you know, title font or anything because they haven't announced the title of the game. Uh, but Nintendo not only has it listed in their investors meetings is still coming in 2022, they're actively advertising to consumers still after announcing that 2022 date earlier this year at E3 that they are going to release it next year. It is a 2022 game. Now again, that doesn't mean there won't be delays. We don't have any exact release information, release month, release quarters, timing of the year, holidays, summer, spring. We don't know anything other than it's supposedly coming next year, but it is nice to see Nintendo confidently reminding people hey breath of the wild 2 the, the sequel to legend of Zelda breath of the wild it's coming in 2022 i find that to just be a little bit reassuring on the worry that we might have that it gets delayed out of 2022 but uh, it still could get delayed zelda games seem to always get delayed i just hope that uh, maybe this is the exception after all it's had almost as much development time as the original breath of the wild and the engines already made the visual style already exist so the only real excuse for it to get delayed to 2023 would be COVID, right? COVID messing up the development cycle. I guess we'll find out, won't we? Uh, next up is our last story, and we're returning the Shin Megami Tensei 5 again um, because, yeah, you guys probably guessed it at this point. Like pretty much any Nintendo Switch game that comes out, it's fully playable on PC emulators. And this time it actually took a day. It wasn't fully playable day one in a, 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 a good state you could load it up but it but now uh, a day after it came out obviously we're now on the monday after it came out uh, it is fully playable on at least two pc emulators right now and we have some news updates on this um directly from the emulators themselves um so it says uh this one comes from the rio jinx um on discord uh, mentioned that Shimigami Tensei 5 aka Persona without the heart is playable. Again, I hate, God, I hate that phrasing of it. It's like it's trying to insult Shimigami Tensei 5 for not being Persona, which is just stupid. It's also possible to run past 30 FPS with VSync disabled. The tab key toggles it as it has a dynamic frame rate and won't speed up. However, known issues in this emulator is that shaders don't cache, so the game relies on your driver's cache, expects shader compilation stuttering. Resolution scaling is very inconsistent and doesn't seem to work with most of the time, and there are a few reports of crashing. Uh, it also is running on the popular uh, Switch emulator, Yuzu, who is claiming they can get the game running all the way to 8K. Um, so it says, yeah, Shin Megami Tensei 5 is playable day one in Yuzu. Survive the post-apocalyptic nightmare at up to 8K resolution. And don't forget to disable the frame limiter for a buttery smooth dynamic FPS experience. Don't worry about stutter. Our shader cache will keep hiccups to a minimum, even if you close and reopen the game. Uh, and then, yeah, obviously throughout this, you've actually seen it, a video of it running on Yuzo this whole time. So the footage of Shin Megami Tensei 5 you saw was actually one being ran on an emulator. So um, I don't know what to think about a story like this. It's both good news and bad news. Like it's good news uh, for people like gamers that are trying to get options uh, to enjoy their Switch games besides Switch. It's also bad news for people like the people who made the game or Nintendo who are trying to prevent um, piracy. Now, granted, not everyone enjoying this game through emulation is pirating the game, but 
we can't ignore that it's obviously part of the equation. So this is again one of those stories, just like with Metroid Dread and Pokemon Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, since that leaked super early. Uh, it's going to be a story with Breath of the Wild 2. It's going to be a story uh, with any Switch game moving forward. The Switch is just an easy system at this point in 2021 to emulate. Um, its hardware is obviously 2015 tech that 2021, 2022 technology can absolutely shred in terms of performance. So it's not really surprising to see it emulated. And the Switch is using more modern architecture, so it's not using some special power PC or some other weird architecture that doesn't functionally run well on current hardware. It's using, you know, Maxwell level of, of stuff, which, yeah, that, that's PC architecture. So that's another reason why it's so much easier to emulate. Uh, so, hey, it is what it is. That's right. I brought that phrase into this, into this video. I think it's the first time I've said it. Maybe. You guys can let me know. Maybe get the counter up and down in the comments if it's been more. Anyways, thank you folks so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. And yeah, I know I didn't have any special image up in here. Just let my rotating desktop background go. Yeah, I'm... I, I felt like being a smidge lazy today. I had a lot going on because we got that Xbox 20th anniversary event coming up, so yeah.